because it's coming against you. But the thing is, well, good evening. It's 15, probably 13 minutes from midnight here in the UK. I needed to do this video. Uh, this is, needs to be dealt with. Um, and uh, here's the thing: this needs to stop, Bruce. What you're doing? Because if you're uh, when you, you're carrying on, uh, and it's true, you are going to a channel where you know that it's going to cause you upset, and you know someone's going to say something to you that you sort of don't agree with because it's coming against you. But the thing is, uh, Bruce, you need to know what you're doing. You need to just change the channel, just like all of us do at some point. If we're not in agreement with someone, and if you know that it's not going to end well with you, just change the channel. So I came on Linda's stream tonight because Linda was doing a very, very good stream. And, um, well, it was half of it was talking about Eric again. Um, and the thing is, um, in the middle, St. Tommy came on. And St. Tommy came on, preached the gospel. Well done, brother. Absolutely, I agree on every point that Tommy was saying uh, regarding the gospel and, and about the book. Amen, Tommy. Well done. Absolutely. Good, good. It's good that someone like Tommy is preaching the gospel and that we should all preach the good news of Jesus Christ. It turned out all right. We were just talking and stuff and Bruce came on, had a chat with, you know, talk to Bruce a little bit and uh, talking about Eric and stuff and uh, just going over the same old thing, Bruce. You were just going over the same old thing. And the Bible says, uh, mark and avoid. There is scriptures that does say to mark and avoid. So if you're not happy going to Eric's, why do you keep going there when you know you're going to have a setback? But then you'll go back to your channel and do the same talk over and over and over again. And Jesus, where's Jesus in this conversations? Nowhere. So I came over to you the other day and having a ch chat with you and everything. You know what, Ben? F, F you and everything. Man, oh man, you did the same as Eric did. You did the same again the other day. Tonight in Linda's Edmondson's thing, I'm ten I'm saying to you, look, maybe you're you're, you're getting yourself sort of like hacked off when you said peed off but you're getting yourself hacked off because you're the one going there making it worse for yourself you know what it's going to say to you you know what's going to be said so why torture yourself by doing that and the scriptures say that you should avoid uh things you know just mark and avoid if it's going to bring you harm if it's going to bring you attention in your life just leave it be then bruce and then i'm talking to you about this on linda's uh, channel and bless her linda's doing the stream and we're having this conversation then you should i'm gonna show you this video i'm gonna play this video and this is from earlier on this evening i had this crazy hope that we'd actually get along i had this thought that just maybe we could actually or understand that it. it's like hey maybe you're not actually of the devil like maybe, you know, but, maybe that, that, okay, for instance, okay, Ben, just let's be straight up if you don't mind. How about this idea? If someone's teaching in your circles that yeah. you have the ability to forgive sins oh. or that if you don't forgive, then they're going to maybe go to hell or something because God won't forgive because you didn't. Do you think? Well, one, I was trying to get to the point in what I was saying, but I was spoken over. Just like you guys accuse other people. I was. Uh, any power to forgive people's sins. The only one that forgives sins is Jesus Christ. God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Only Father God and Son, Holy Spirit have, you know, are, are the, you know God it has the power to, to forgive sins. That's who God is. He, he, he forgives. You know, through Jesus Christ, we have forgiveness through the redemption that is through his blood. But Jesus did say, though, not regarding forgiving people's sins, but if certain people trespass you, trespass against you, or do things against you, it's such a make you angry or anything like that. The scriptures does say, a lot Paul writes in Ephesians 4 verse 32, Apostle Paul writes this, he says, Forgiven one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath given you. That's that's a fact. Then it's continued. That should be called out, or should that be left alone, or should you fear the teacher? Which is it? Who oh, do you what? fear, God or the teacher? Well, the thing is, where's the fear? Who's calling forgives, this man out? God forgives, God forgives sins. We can't forgive sins. That's only right. God, only and why God doesn't anybody sins. have the balls to stand up and tell this guy that what he's teaching is well, blasphemy? Yeah, Where's your guts? We all people, can't be people, like, people. The thing is, Bruce, what makes you think I haven't gone to American private? What makes you think anybody hasn't gone to American private and say, mm, you're a bit off here? 
I have gone to Eric in private personally in an email and say, hmm, what you're saying, you know, doesn't seem right, Eric and stuff. You know, haven't always got an answer because he's been with his vow. I don't, I don't know. And I, I haven't been there for a while. But once again, Bruce, change the channel. But let's continue. Let's continue. Mm. Trespass, but if people trespass against you, we can is uh, we can forgive in the sense like look like, well, right. you know forgive as we cannot make god decide true, no, we cannot make god forgive or not forgive someone and that dude's teaching it and there's nobody there with guts to stand up and call I know, I can't thank god nobody. you're there Bruce. and if you but if you do but remember this that if you do call them out oh my god. nobody will defend you and you will get hammered like freaking I don't I know. know okay. They'll just uh, destroy you as best they can. Anyhow, I better yeah. shut up and get off YouTube. No, I got to no, 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 no. right. right. off. Yeah. Still, I thought I'd be over. Right. Yeah. Anyhow. Okay. Okay. So, um, Bruce says that he's peed off. He's peed off. Uh, and I replied to him, look, I did say to him, look, you're making yourself like that by going to a channel that you know that's going to be setbacks from a person that you know you don't get on with at the moment and stuff like that. Why go to a channel that's going to cause you tension and anger like that and you know that you're going to do more and more streams, it's going to be the same old rhetoric, same old thing, time and time again. This is the whole point. There's been a lot of channels I've changed the channel and, and, and you know, we should change the channel. All of us, we should change channels from people that, are, that might cause us grief and they might be teaching wrong things, whatever. Change the channel. Move on. Pray for them. Let Lord deal with them. And um, you know, the Lord will show you. Just change the channel. Just you know, go. Leave the channel. And I did say this. Here we are. You guys. Yes, but you think you allowed yourself to be do, be like that, though, Bruce? You're, oh, there you go. And I was yeah, exactly. And I said he's allowing to be. He's allowing to let himself be like that. And the reason why he's allowed, the reason why he's allowing to be himself like that, because he's going to Eric's channel where he knows there's going to be same old stuff and everything else, and he knows he's going to be kicked out, just like you, Bruce, did to me, you hypocrite. So you can't talk about Eric again, can you? It was fine. I was talking to Tommy and Linda, having a chat. Bruce comes in. <laughs> It was fine. It was nice. I was asking Tommy how he was doing. It was nice having the chat. Well, the one hey, man, let me tell you how. Him. What? I'm the one who what? Right. This is where it gets really bad. This is where it gets really, really bad. And I know they're watching because I can see comments of uh, conditionally damn, just say no to cussing. Laugh about it, yeah, why don't you? Yeah, and I know you're watching Cheryl. Hello, Cheryl. Hey, <laughs> yeah. I mean, someone told you about the stream, or someone seen it on Linda might have seen it, but it's good that you're all watching. But listen to this explicit language you're the one making it difficult to yourself by going hey, to hey, a channel. Hey, 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 now, look, I meant nothing nasty about that. I was ten. I was. I meant nothing nasty about that. And Linda, I'm being honest with you. I wasn't being nasty about that. All I was saying was, look, you're making it hard on yourself by going over to Eric, because you know what's going to happen. Surely you might have learned that by now, and not get so ticked off. You come back and then you could <laughs> you do that some more. Then you come back and go over there some more, and you know what's going to happen. And, and, and by the way, Bruce, whatever you're going through with what you've got and everything, everyone has something. Let me say that for at least. Everyone has something. No one's condemning you for that. And if they are, that's not good. Um, it's not right to condemn people with what they have. Everyone has something. I'm going to say this. You're not making it easy for yourself. Keep going over there. All right. You're not going to make it easy for yourself. Keep going over to Eric's because you know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen, man. Okay. And then this is your reply. Listen to this, everybody. This nasty tone. Listen. Ben, let me share how I want to tell you I love you, okay? 
Yeah, yeah, you can't, can't. asshole. I love you. No, look at that. Look at that. Listen to that horrible speech. No, Conrad, Conrad. I never had. No, no, no. I was at Linda's first. I had a chat with uh, Tommy and Linda. It was a, it was a nice chat until all this started up again. Are you making fun? You want me to kick you off? I can. <laughs> Make me a hypocrite like Bruce. Are you trying to be funny, Conrad? This ain't good. I'm being serious, man. And look what happens. Listen to that horrible language. Oh, what? No, 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 watch your mouth, man. Watch your mouth. Watch your gob. Right. So after all that, Bruce gets to swear and, and all that sort of thing, loses cool as he always does gets to lose his cool and what happens linda defends her pal bruce now we know where that happened we know where we stand linda don't we sister hmm? we know where we stand i mean <laughs> now i'm not saying that we're not perfect in our speech all the time but this is becoming too much bruce this ain't this ain't Glorifying God, what you're doing. Uh, Proverbs 18, verse 7 A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. My word, I brought a lot of people out tonight, haven't I? Wow. I'm not going to keep quiet about this. I don't care what any people say. This ain't good. If, I, if, I'm, in that, if I'm in the state, like, like Bruce is at the moment, I want someone to do a video about me about that. If I'm in the state constantly getting angry with people and, and trying to have a conversation with them, then he loses his call with me, yet he goes on about Eric, throws him out of chat, puts him backstage, shows him no love. You're doing no, you're doing the same thing, Bruce, you hypocrite. You're doing the same thing, you're a hypocrite, Bruce. So I'm put backstage. Look at this. I'm not going to have that. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, but Linda, bless you. I know that you were trying to sort out stuff and everything, but I was trying to have a chat. I was trying to have a chat with you. I was trying to have a chat with you and Tommy and everything else. And of course, all this stuff was brought up again and everything else. I'm not leaving Linda alone. I'm bringing up the fact was that I was at Linda's, and I was at Linda's right. And having a chat with her and Tommy and everything else, and Bruce comes in, and it's nice to see Bruce, etc. And it is, and I'm, and I'm trying to trying to have a chat with him and all that, and then he's like, "F off," and everything else, this and everything else, and I'm not having it. It's not right. That's no, that's not fellowship. That's not fellowship. That's a travesty. <laughs> I don't want to fight on here. I neither did I, Linda. Be nice. Yeah, Come on, absolutely. I want some nice in my room. Amen. Yeah. You know, Bruce wasn't very nice, was he now? But you never put him backstage. You never put him backstage. That's sad. Then don't be, be fighting in here. I'll let you I was just stating a fact. He's... He's actually causing himself grief by going over to Eric's because he knows the outcome of what's going to happen. Then he goes and spews so much on his uh, streams about the same old thing time and time again. Let's have some Bible reading out of you for a change, Bruce. Let's have a good Bible study for a change, Bruce. I come, but I don't want to find I'm, I'm about ready to read my steel over. Set of people down here. Okay, Ben, Praise I want to Okay, I want to Okay, now, Linda, bless her. She was going to read something, uh, and I did hear the first part of her stream earlier on, and it was a good study from the first epistle of John, chapter 4. You know, and it says that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh, and if you look at the King James, it actually says that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh, not was or has come in the flesh. Most Bibles say that Jesus has come in the flesh. No, no, Jesus is not a has-been. He is here. He is here right now. Jesus is 
and is always will be. Jesus is manifest in the flesh. Jesus is, uh, Jesus Christ came and he is here now. You know, the word says is, which means also presently. He is within believers, he is within us. Jesus is. Okay, I just wanted to say that. And I did reply here, and this was my last reply to you, Bruce. Go y'all down, I'll read the same read. Now, just sit back and listen. Linda, okay. I never started it. Bruce well, did. Okay. You hey, defended hey, someone hey, who hey, swore at me. Hey, Goodbye, hey, Linda. Hey. Goodbye, Linda. Hey. Goodbye, Linda. Hey. Goodbye, Bruce. I'm done with you, man. You're hey. horrible. All, All right. right. Well. So, yes, I did say that. I did say horrible. You know, I did say horrible because that, that tone, everything about that was just travesty. And Linda had the nice stream going there. It was lovely and I enjoyed it. <coughs> and it's, this is not against Linda, uh, Shannon, if you think that. It's not, it's not against Linda. It's against Bruce. It's Bruce pointing out his hypocrisy. He goes over to Eric's channel. Then he comes crying and blubbering over to other channels and even here saying, oh, he kicked me out and everything else. And he don't love me. He shows no love. I'll kick you out. And everybody else is like, yeah, yeah. You've done the same. You've done the very same thing. Oh, Bruce. Word says, and I, and as I say, if I'm in error, and I'm, you know, and anything like that, where I'm constantly cussing out the brethren, or I'm constantly being angry, or if I'm constantly walking disorderly, tell me, tell me. And this is what the word says. Hello, the word prophet. Uh, sorry, soldier prophet, soldier poet, rather. Hello, brother. I'm getting all tongue twisted. Hello, Conrad. Yes. But Linda hasn't done anything wrong apart from stick up for Bruce and put me backstage even after he's cussing and all that rubbish. It's disgusting. It's filthy. So this is what the word says to a brother that's walking disorderly. Now we command you. This is Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw. It says that ye withdraw. From every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received from us. For ye yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. For we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labour and travail night and day, that we might be not chargeable that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power but to make ourselves an ensample. It's another word for an e example, basically. But it means it says ensample unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded that you, that if any man would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that, though, for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. That's happening right now, isn't it not? Disorderly. Look, if I'm constantly using those horrible, ghastly words every single day and I'm constantly being a hypocrite, like putting people backstage or doing anything like that, whatever whatever you like, whatever you like, um, you know, whatever it is, if I'm walking disorderly, tell me. If any of you guys are walking disorderly, we, we, we support each other in the world. But this is getting too much, Bruce. You are making yourself peed off by going over to Bruce, uh, Eric, rather. Because you're the one that's you're the one that's hurting your own self, man. You're the one that's hurting your own self for going over there, knowing to the full fact that you're going to get some negative. You're going to get some sort of negativity. Whether Eric means that, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is Bruce, you're just doing the same thing, and it's not good. And I can't, I can't fellowship. I cannot talk with you, Bruce. There's just no reasoning. No, no, Jace. No, Jace, when when you give the word of God uh, and stuff like that. 
Jess. I can't see Jess there. Is Cheryl here? Oh, I blocked him, didn't I? If anyone's got a problem, please point it out. But I'm, I'm not going to just let this slip. Yeah, and, and, and I wouldn't want any of you guys to slip. Uh, I, I, I want, you know, I think, I think, I think the truth is, a lot of the Bible, a lot of scripture and truth in the Bible, how, how to walk in the Lord and how to walk in fellowship with each other and everything. People want worldly answers, but there's no godly answers. It's going to the book. Let's continue here with Paul Wright. He says, um, well, if we hear that there are some which more walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, so we're not to count the brother as an enemy. Okay, this is true here, verse 15. Yet not counting him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. You're talking to me just like rubbish, Bruce. And, I, and all I want to do was just talk with you. And, and when you said I'm getting beat off and I'm just telling you the truth, look, you, you're getting yourself wound up by going over to Eric's. If that's not, <laughs> and if, if that's too much truth for you, well, I'm sorry, but that's the truth. And all you responded with was ugly insults and nasty words. And then you doing the same as Eric. Then you go and complain about Eric. It's hypocrisy to the fullest. No, no one can change them but God. But the thing is, though, what's happened to the word of God, Jace? I think we we all need to look at us look at the word of God and see what the word of God says. Conrad, come on, he's the one. He's come on, Bruce. Uh, sorry, Conrad, rather. Let's look at it like this. What happens when Bruce takes himself over to Eric's? Bruce comes back to one of his channels, does a stream, streams for a long, long, long time. Or whatever, or short time, depending. You know, I'm just, I'm just some, you know, I'm just uh, hyperbole. And he, he will stream, talk about Eric and what he did to him and stuff. Then he'll go to other people about them. He keep going to Eric's, and he knows that he'll be pushed out. You know, he'll be, you know, and everything else. And this is why I said to him, Conrad, that basically he's making himself more stressed out or angry going there himself. Because I said that to him tonight. What happened? I got spat in the face for it. It's disgusting, Conrad. It's not good. Oh, I didn't realise so... that. <clears throat> yeah, count him not... Right. Yeah, count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with mine own hand which is the token in every epistle. So I write, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Um, I would never, I would never do what, I, what Bruce has said to me tonight. I will never say that to you, Bruce. But you've shown your own heart tonight and it's not good. No, it's not bearing the hatchet Conrad, because if he was trying to bury the hatchet, he wouldn't keep going over there knowing that he would get kicked out all the time. Uh, you know, yeah, it's happening almost every day. He's going over there, and it's going to be set back. I think the best thing is, is to leave sleeping dogs lying. I'm not going to repeat what he said to me, Shannon. If you want to rewind Lenders a little later, 
Or if you want to rewind on here. No, I'm not going to say it on here. Nope. Nope. Uh, but there is no fellowship with Briss on my behalf anymore. Um, he repent for what he said. Gladly, I'd forgive him. Scriptures does say uh, that if, if your brother repents to you for what he, you know, for whatever trespass against you he did, then we are to forgive them. Till then, there is no fellowship or discussion with Bruce. I'm sorry. Uh, Belinda says to well, you know, why did you defend someone who started cussing at me? Because I told him the truth that he's written himself in the position that he's constantly going over to Eric's, knowing what's, well, knowing full well what's going to happen. I mean, it's, it's just so, so. God's will be done in all things. I've got nothing else to say, friends. I've got to go. Um, got a study coming up in the week. Uh, going to look at Jesus and his ministry. And I'm looking forward to this. It's a really good one. Guys, you look after yourselves and take it easy. Bruce, get it figured, man. A good discussion that yeah. could be a very good discussion yes it's yeah so. yeah so, we'll, um yeah i'll get i'll get back to him i think ace is still thinking about it and um you know yeah if you and will want to come over to the channel go ahead okay i was i was kind of in the middle of a couple if you would like to drop up because there are people who are willingly ignorant and become willing victims and there's william Fre Good afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you're at. It's 6.59 here. Gosh, I'm late a couple minutes getting this opened up. All right. That's okay. God bless you. It's good to see you. This is Eric. And uh, let me thank you guys. Yahoo, Sherry. William Freeman, how are you doing? So if uh, William Freeman thinks he has some testicle, uh, testicular fortitude, you know, we used to call that intestinal fortitude, kid. Um. Uh, In other words, that's where the, 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 the term guts come from. Had no guts. Uh, hello, Ryan. Good to see you. And I see William has more to say. 
You want to come up here, William? You could be one of the people that we talk about today. People who are willingly ignorant. Willing victims. Would you like to come up and show everybody a little victim mentality? I'd be happy to bring you up and give you the opportunity. So, let's see. Let's put a link in victims. And there's William Freeman. Let's see if William is one of these guys. Hello, William. How you doing? Hi, Eric. Hello. You used to be a Christian, from what I understand. Opinions vary. Uh, isn't that what you used to say? Yes. Oh, okay. You 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 used to be a Christian, but you no longer are. Now you're an anti-theist. Why? I'm sorry. Who are you talking to? You. I'm not an anti-theist. Why would you? Well, say of that? course you're an anti-theist. No. When it comes, well, at least anti-Christian. Let's say that. I'm not anti-Christian. Oh, of course you're anti-Christian. You prove that everywhere. Everywhere you no, go. My folks, my folks are Christian. You're, I, love you're them. The, I don't care. You're a mocker. Yeah, okay. I'm stupid. Do your parents believe God is everywhere? I don't know. You don't know? That's correct. Are they Christian? Yeah. And you don't know what they believe? That's right. <laughs> That's wrong. Of course you know what they believe. No, you know not. whether or not your parents believe God is everywhere. Are you, are you assuming the nature of my relationship with my parents? Oh, so you don't have a good relationship with your parents. I didn't say that either. And you don't know what a good Christian believes. I didn't say that either. They never talk to you about their faith. Not not a whole lot. You don't know what Christians believe as a former Christian. I didn't say that at all. Oh, okay. So so what are you saying? Go go right ahead. Tell us I'm about it. I'm answering your questions. Yeah. Uh, how do you know? You don't know that Christians believe God is everywhere. You seem to. I don't think because you mock agree that, don't you? I don't think Christians agree on what Christians. Believe but don't in. you mock that idea that God is everywhere? No, I don't. I don't knock. I don't knock that idea. It's just the idea that it's Yahweh. Oh, so Thor could be anywhere, right? I doubt it. Thor could be everywhere. Odin could be everywhere. No, I doubt that. No, no. Krishna can be there everywhere. Mm, probably not. No. So, so you said anyone but Yahweh. So, no, I asked, he, why do you think it's Yahweh? Well, because he said so. When? When in the scriptures. I mean, but when? When many times in the scriptures. You don't know that? No, I mean, I, I know when it was. Well, I know. Didn't you ever read down. the Bible, William Freeman? Yeah, I, I did. I said I know people wrote it down. I asked when he actually said it, though. How do you know people wrote it down? I assume. How do you know God didn't tell them that? Oh, I didn't say that. I said that okay. men wrote it down. Okay. Okay. Do you disagree that men wrote the Bible? And God gave that to them, right? That's fine. I, I asked you if you believe just that like, men Just have... like Jesus said. Did, did God and write anything? Just like Jesus finger? said, just like Jesus said, the revelation of Jesus Christ, right, which God gave unto him mm -hmm. to shew unto his servants things that must shortly come to pass. No, that's that's the opposite of what I said. Do you know your parents? I, I I know their names. I know who they are. Okay. Okay. And do you I, I don't know, know them, them in the biblical sense? Do you, do you do do you know your parents? Like you know yeah, a friend. I saw, I saw them yesterday. I visited with them. So. How do you know they exist? I suspect they do. You suspect they do. Do you know that because you commune with them? N no. I no. You don't they... commune with them. Communing with your parents don't mean that your relationship with them is real. Do you want me to answer? Or do you just want to fill in the blanks for yourself? Yeah. Do they? Do, does your communion with your parents prove that they exist? I think their physicality proves they exist. <laughs> and your communion with them means nothing. You don't know whether or not somebody that lives physically on the other side of the planet lives physically on the other side of the planet, do you? Correct. But you know your parents, don't you? Uh, yeah. Okay. So you don't know the person on the other side of the planet, but you know your parents. And now, why do you know your parents? Because you've spent time with them. Because you've been with them. Because they have raised you. Because cool. they had contact yes. with you. Yes, I'll grant you okay. all Okay, so you can't unknow your parents, can you? I mean, yeah, I could, I could suffer some sort of brain in, in, injury like and get amnesia and not know them. You can't just unknow your parents, though, can you? 
barring any barring answer. barring any physical destruction to you. Yeah, yeah. I, I you cannot unknow your parents. I can't you? selectively forget them. No, you cannot. You cannot. You can't unknow them. What, do you not? You know can't. You can't suddenly you? come to the. You can't Eric? suddenly come to the conclusion. I agreed with you. How did you miss that? I agreed with you. Exactly. Not, good. So then, you never knew Christ. That doesn't follow. Oh, that follows. You can't unknow anybody that you know. When did, when did God tell you? Do you know? Do you have any siblings? No, no my turn. My turn. When did do God you have any siblings, no, no, my William? Turn. Do God... you have any siblings, William? There you go. Bye bye, William. So there you go. There's an example of somebody that's willingly ignorant. He <laughs> says. <laughs> You wouldn't even let him speak, Eric, which is no surprise to me. Why am I even here listening to you, you disgusting individual? And you're not the only one, Eric. You're the one playing the victim. Willing victims. You made a victim of yourself, and then you start whinging about forgiveness and love, 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 love. Love, love, love. And you're just annoying everybody. I'm not annoyed, I'm just bemused, I think. I'm sickened by you. And one or two others. He says that he used to know God, and then he says, I no longer know God. Oh, he's JG. Late this afternoon. It's been a really busy day here. Uh, oh, yeah. What are you up to, brother? I was very kind to you. I didn't mock back. I even told you I forgive you. And I do. But children need spanked. You bring up your child in the way that he should go. When you see a toddler running toward the electrical sucker with a fork in his hand, you smack his hand. You spank his bottom. <laughs> sorry, it's not funny, but... Yeah, well, it's true, isn't it? You tell well, him no. Yeah. He, wants, he wants to come back for another spanking, but uh, I'm trying to help you guys out. It's up to you. Well, I, I appreciate that. I would... I would let him in, but I don't know. He says he's agreeing to be moderated, so... He's agreeing to be moderated. Well, then, what we can do, I think the best way to settle this, because I, I agree that JG's a wonderful moderator. Thanks. Uh, let's set this up on JG's channel. Uh, Will, you can give him a date and time, and I will probably be good with it. Now, I do have some appointments and et cetera set up that I do have to make. So, you know, the, it's a temporarily, res temporarily reserved the date. I would love to uh, let Tommy need a moderator. It's ridiculous, isn't it? But JG is a good and fair moderator. Uh, Scott, we enjoy you, man. Thank you. You see, when people ridicule Christ, here's, huh. but you know, I was such a hard-headed man. I was, they glorified him not as God. They do stupid, foolish, you know, that, or I'm a Christian because I'm not a monk. Someone who says, I'm looking for that answer. He rebels. He rejects it. Why? Because evidently the word of God isn't good enough for him. He rebels. He rejects it. Why? Someone that I keep giving chance after chance and haters. I'm a Christian because mom and dad were. No. Christians know Christ, my friend. That's what a Christian is. And if you know Christ, you never unknow Christ. You might grow to hate him. You might grow to resent him. But you don't unknow him. You've proven yourself to be a Christian hater, William. And Christian haters don't hate for no reason. You see, you're resisting something, too. We have another friend who's willingly ignorant. Someone that I care for. Hmm. Someone that I keep giving chance after chance after chance to come up here and be civil. Who? Someone who says, I'm looking for an answer. And yet when he's given that answer, he rebels. He rejects it. Why? Eric, nobody needs you or is depending on you. For an opportunity or a chance or anything.
because evidently the word of God isn't good enough for him. He's willingly ignorant. He says, yes. He even goes so far as to say, yes. I believe that's possible, what you're saying. In other words, I don't know whether what you're saying is true or not. But, 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 but. You don't know what kind of fear I've had in the past. Well, dude, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He claims to have agoraphobia, and then he's outside every five minutes. And then he oh, says, well, I used to. He claims to have severe agoraphobia, and like it's just tearing him apart. I need to come up and talk about it. Don't about Bruce. And then you see him outside all the time. Oh. I've dealt with people with agoraphobia, <laughs> dude. I know what it looks like. They're not hanging outside. But then when you come to me looking for a godly answer, and I give you the godly answer, perfect love casts out all fear, dude. If you want to not live in fear, walk in perfect love. Now, I didn't say that facetiously. I didn't say it just because the Bible said it. I said it because I live it. I said it because I know it's true. I was giving you first-hand advice. Perfect love casteth out all fear, my friend. Fear has torment. I don't want to see you live in fear. And I know for a fact you can be delivered from this fear. But fear is your friend, apparently. You prefer to keep fear. You prefer to remain ignorant so you can live in your fear. So you can say, God doesn't work. You see, it's my contention that people who are willingly ignorant and cause a constant stir among the Christian community, because of their willing ignorance, they become willing victims. And they're always, oh, woe is me. I have been so wronged in my life. Always. That's all you ever hear from them. I say, how you doing, brother? Oh, I'm not doing good. Yesterday or day before, was it? I don't remember which it was. It was the very first time that I brought you up here again, trying to give you another chance. And I said, well, how you doing, brother? And you said, I'm doing good for the very first time. And I said, in a long, long time. And I said, well, I'm really glad to hear that. And I sincerely was. But you know something? You said that just so you could turn around and attack again, didn't you? Because you came in and said, oh, I want to talk about love and I want to talk about fear. Even though you use widows' prized possessions against them and leverage them because they hang around here and listen to our fellowship. And she likes to fellowship with us. And you say, see if any of your new friends can download this music I've been holding for you of your husband and yourself as you sing in church. Your most prized possessions. I'm no longer your friend after this many years. Scott says, I discovered many people don't want solutions or advice. Many simply want to be heard and loved. Sometimes I tend to want to just solve the problem, but discover only God can. And hello, Moses. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. Thank you for coming in the first place and, and thinking of us and wanting to share your fellowship with us, Moses. Thank you so much. And I know what you mean, Scott. You want to help these people because you love these people. But these people, not only are they willingly ignorant, not only do they become willing victims of their own device, 
They're victimizing their own selves. They choose to live in bitterness and hate you too, don't they? Because it's not you that hate. You see, you are a constant reminder of what they're trying to sweep under the carpet. You're a constant reminder that God's word is true and that they don't have to be victims. They don't have to be victims of their own selves. They don't have to be victims of their, their own rashness, their own fears. Amen. God, I'm with you. Father, in Jesus' name, let your light shine. And you know what God told us? And I have absolute faith in. Amen. Scott, Moses, all you guys, Jill. God does shine his light. And he shines it through you. He shines it through me. There are people in this world that look at you, my friend. And they see the righteous acts of God working in your life, and they glorify our Father who's in heaven because you have what they need. I know that stands true for me. I look at you. I see the light of, light of God shining through you. I see truth shining through you. I see love. The love of God, not just some BS superficial kind of appreciation. Not something as shallow as friendship or even brotherhood. Or sex. This kind of love goes ever deep. This is the only kind of love that makes you say, Father, forgive those people that have come against me. Don't hold this charge against them. By these things, people know that you're not a hypocrite, my friend. They know that you have a relationship with God. They know that you hold the answers the solutions to their problems. Because God is it. And deep down inside, we all know this. We all do. I'm just reminding you. God has already put this truth in the heart of every man, woman, and child that lives on this earth. So when we love, when we forgive... Oh, I'm pretty clear, isn't it? 